really, I was taught by daughters from early on. And it was at a time when there was a sister in every classroom. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I really felt called early, early on. I try to deny it. But the truth of the matter is, when I was a senior in high school, my boyfriend wanted to break up with me. And I said, that's all right. I'm going to become a sister anyway. <laughs> and then I really regretted it because, of course, it was all over school the next day. I was really drawn to a couple of the, of the sisters that taught me. And so I knew them. They were also in Perryville. I'm from Perryville, Missouri, which is very Vincentian. It's a very Vincentian place. And I really was drawn to the ministry, um, to service of the poor. And, you know, I can remember going to see one of my favorite teachers to tell her that I was going to become, I wanted to join the community. And she paused and she said, I'd like to live with you. And I thought, what a, what a wonderful way to respond to somebody who is interested in, in vocation. Um, so I think actually my, my aunt was a precious blood from room, uh, from O'Fallon. Oh. Um, and I really thought of being in her community because they could come home and the daughters weren't coming home when, when I first entered oh. and the daughters wore that huge cornet. Oh, the good I, got, old days. I got terrible headaches and I thought, I, I don't think, but then they, they changed habits. I currently I'm hired in part time to do parenting programs at Fathers Fathers and Families Support Center, which is primarily a um, program that services African American men who have been incarcerated, who have have suffered from addictions, who have mm. abuse, who have all kinds of, of problems. And I do parenting programs for them as part of a comprehensive six week program. So I'm, I'm one of the facilitators that goes in and does the parenting piece. Yeah, so these are guys who were incarcerated, they're out now, who, ha who are fathers or who have fathered kids. And right. now you're there to help them in your own ministry to move into fatherhood and what that means. And, and, and to realize the importance of them because most of them believe or have been told that the only thing they're good for is their money. Mm -hmm. And so the, one of the big things I hit from the, from the very beginning is that your children need you emotionally. They need you as a person. Don't ever not go see them because you don't have anything to give them you have yourself and that's the most important thing that they need. Yeah. Also, I also work with the ladies of charity um, and, uh, and do spiritual formation with the ladies of charity, which is a Vincentian group. Yeah. And so I also do prayer services with them and retreats and I'm a, I'm a resource for them. Yeah, and the ladies of charity, as opposed to you as a daughter of charity, right. you're vowed they're lay women that's who correct. come together because they love the Vincentian spirit and working through that in their own lives. And actually, the ladies were the first group that St. Vincent formed. Yeah. Before Vincentians, before daughters, they were the first group. And, and so they were his, his initiation. Favorite. Yeah, it's like being the oldest kid. They're his favorite. That's right. I don't know about that. Before COVID, <laughs> what I enjoyed the most was going out to lunch or breakfast with friends or sisters or um, just just enjoying company and, and involvement with other people. And that was a favorite thing. I, going to the botanical gardens in St. Louis really brings me back home to what's important. Now, uh, I take a nap or I play spider solitaire, <laughs> two suits, or I do wordscape on my cell phone. 
um, just try to get away, do something that's kind of fun and relaxing and, and there's closure at the end. Yeah. Um, because so much of my work is, is really doing creative stuff and trying to be available. And, um, hmm. so that's what I, that's what I do to, to enjoy life. Okay, I get up early in the morning and so it's dark, especially now it's dark and I get a cup of coffee and then I sit in my favorite chair in my room, which is in a prayer corner really. And it, it overlooks a window and so I can look outside and see the sun rising and mm. it's, it's, it's a really quiet, peaceful, um special place yeah and and then i just sit there and and talk to god <laughs> it's 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 wonderful it's a wonderful gift every morning yeah uh, it it sets my day it sets my day i i i say god say good morning jesus is is the person i speak with and and spend time with and enjoy with when I, when I pray. And so I say good morning. And then I offer Jesus all that I am and ask that, that he take possession of me. And, and then, you know, I, I say that I love him and I, and, and then he talks back to me. He says he loves me. And I say, Oh, please let me hear your voice. And then I, I, I say thank you for a number of things. I thank thank him for his presence. I thank him for his love. I thank him for his 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 giving me everything that I need when I need it. And then I just sit there and see see what what Jesus puts in my head and puts in my heart and listen. Yeah. Try to listen. <laughs> And not let my mind go wild. But a lot of people say that's the greatest challenge, that their mind does go wild. When you go wild in your thoughts, is there anything that brings you back or you just kind of... I do have a, a mantra and it's my Jesus, my Jesus. And that brings me back. Um, it, it helps me a lot to have that short phrase that reminds me oh yeah this is prayer time this is our time to con converse and one of the things i do with the with the men in, in my parenting program is talk about special time and how important one-on-one -on -one time is with children and i always add and anybody we want a special relationship with we need to spend time with them one-on-one -on -one time the same with god the same with our higher power um, yeah. and, and so I, that's what I think prayer is. Uh, I heard just this morning, prayer is letting God love you, letting God love me. And I, that's beautiful. I think. I, I've got three books that I use all the time. Jesus calling is one of the ones that I absolutely love. Yeah. And a lot of people have know that one. Sarah Young is, is wonderful, and I've been reading it a lot. The other one, which really isn't a spiritual book, but it's really good, and I, it's another one I use all the time. It's Melanie Beatty's Journey to the Heart, and you can see it's all worn because I've used it so much. But the other one that I just found, have you heard of this one? The Boy, the Mole, hmm. the Fox and the Horse. No. It's a wonderful book. It's really a children's book. It's got, you know, all kinds of, of fun illustrations oh, in it. I love pictures. But the page I love the most, you, you have, those of you who know me know that I'm a perfectionist. And this page is just absolutely wonderful. And it, what it says is the greatest illusion, the greatest illusion, said the mole, is that life should be perfect. And then there's there's footprints all over it. And the author says that his cat are his dog. Anyway, one of his one of his pets 
walked across the ink <laughs> and, and, and think footprinted the whole page. And I thought, oh, isn't that perfect? It's, it, you know, we, we want to be perfect and yet it's impossible for human beings. And, and it, it, it's just, it touches my heart, <laughs> touches my heart. I love this question. And, you know, as I processed it and thought about it, I thought I'd probably need a couple trillion to do what I really want to do. <laughs> well, you're and, greedy too. And what, what I would want to do is start an ad campaign on the sacredness of life and target at le the cities where there's so much crime and, and killing of each other. Because I think that what we've lost is how, how sacred life is. And so similar to the presidential campaigns, I'd like to start a blitz campaign where life is sacred and done, done professionally and, and catchy and, and try to capture, try to get back to, to the, the idea that life is, is really so valuable and precious. Yeah. And from, from conception to natural death, a seamless garment. That's what I do with that much wow. money. And don't you think it'd probably take a couple trillion? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, this is a, this one. I, I have to share this one. Um, I just recently I cooked supper for the six of us, and that's always attention for me because I, I'm not a good cook or I don't feel like I'm a good cook and it takes me time. And it was like half an hour before supper was, was to be on the table. And I cut my finger <laughs> on a, on a tin can on the, on the lid of a tin can and it was bleeding profusely. And of course supper wasn't ready. And right before I did it, the two sisters who work at our provincial offices across the street had just gotten home. And one of them happened to be in the kitchen area where I was. And I said, oh, look at my finger and it's bleeding. And I mean, she came over to help me. And she said, oh, I think, I think maybe we need the other sister who's a nurse. Um, and, and so we went to her and, and she put butterfly band-aids on it and we squeezed it shut. And, and the other sister helped me get supper on the table. So. I not only got my, my finger bandaged, but I also got supper on the table on time <laughs> because those two sisters were so generous and so available. And I, it just helped me realize that God takes care of me. God protects me. God there to get me through and to get it done. And, and it, it was just a, a real gift to have them so available and so ready to help me. And it was God's doing. Yeah, and... And my finger's pretty good. My finger looks great. Yeah, can we look at it really quick? Sure. I, I don't know how I get it up there. <laughs> there. Um, let's see, what was I fixing? Hamburgers. Oh. I was having hamburgers and, and fr French fries and... and wow. I, a, a, a relish tray and I had made apple crisp. Sometimes I make chicken soup. Sometimes I make chicken and dumplings, which is a Perryville favorite. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I make, uh, I, I do ham steaks. Sometimes mm -hmm. I do meatloaf. We yeah, do. I'm just glad there's no vegetarians in the house because it sounds like they'd starve. Well, <laughs> we've got one that's supposed to be, but she cheats a lot. <laughs> <laughs>